so here's my demonstration on how I do Uru CC clef skip. I can nearly guarantee that I'm not going to get it, but uh, we'll get there when we get there. So first I'm demonstrating that, that I'm making sure that any setup that you pick, it does not matter what character you pick. Uh, there are some setups like that Zaustus uses where he puts the pole between the character's legs and that might be different from male to female and so on and so forth. So that's sort of the thing that I wanted to prevent. So that's why I have made the most unique character I could <clears throat> in order to demonstrate that. So a little bit of backstory. I think this setup for Clefskip was originally found in Lula two years ago, two or three years ago. It was a while ago now. But basically, a lot of the reason that we didn't think that it was applicable to CC is that in Mula you can jump higher and you move faster. And it's the slight sort of difference that makes everything. As it turns out, I don't actually think that's the case. Even though that is true, I don't think that's what really applies to the class skip setup. What it actually comes down to is a slight modification in the physics where there is a bit of geometry that you can much more easily stand on in Mula that you can't you can almost not stand on top of in CC which is why this is going to be so precise so here we are so the first thing that we're going to do before anything else is I'm going to open up the menu if I can figure it. okay so F4 opens this menu uh, game settings advance this is pretty much what saves this setup is go to where I'll, I click so let me show you what happens in first person with uh, go to where I click. So if it's somewhere near the middle of the screen, then what happens is your position sort of snaps and then you start moving forward, right? However, if you click near the corner of the screen, then you pan until that position and if you let go quick enough, it just adjusts your angle. So this allows us to have consistent-ish angles even when we don't have like a very good positional point so i will i will so first we need to get on the rock here uh well i'll get to the pointer stuff but first we getting on this rock usually what i do is i run and jump like that so on this slope you want to jump when you just about are at the pole so that it slows you down enough to land on this rock so the first thing that you have to do now is make your angle approximately close as close as you can get away with to being centered against this fence here that's going to be you know impossible but we're going to try our best so the way that i do this is i put my pointer so the circle is around the tip here and click this makes it so that my position is facing this and assuming you're sort of close enough the angle is not going to be that different right and the reason that I put this near the, the, the top is as you can see there's sort of a distortion with the FOV where things are bigger so like you can see I can contain the whole thing inside the circle and it's near the middle of the screen but near the edge of the screen it does that so things are more precise relative to the center when you put them near the edge here so I just like to make it as you know precise as possible right so now we're going to start with the position setup which is different depending on what angle you're facing into the cleft unfortunately this is something i haven't been able to to fix yet but the setup is different depending on whether you're looking into the cleft or whether your position is is facing forward which i will try to demonstrate so first we're going to do looking down into the cleft watch for the left side of the screen here you want to tap left such that the edge of this just about touches the edge of the screen this is a consistent and good way to get a positional setup out of pretty much nothing because we don't have a good way to get a positional uh, setup otherwise this is pretty much as good as we're going to get for cleft and we'll have something similar when you're facing forward as well so now we have a consistent position now we need to have a consistent angle and unfortunately this is just about the worst part of the setup and the, and the least consistent but you have some sort of variability with this. So on this rock face, you can see there's a lot of variation here. The part that I'm looking for in particular, and it's really hard to see, I will try my best to point it out here. It's right here, right? Maybe I can zoom in on this. Uh, 
yeah, let me see. Hold on. I'm going to grab mist here. I'm going to copy and paste it. Paste a duplicate. Hopefully that works. Okay, and then what I will do is I will filter. So this is, again, a really hard setup to, to work with, unfortunately, uh, because of how precise the angle demands are and everything. But I will do my best to try to show this off. Okay, and the bottom will have similar sort of cropping. Uh, give me a sec. I'm almost there. Uh, okay, this seems pretty good. Okay, so putting this on top here. <laughs> okay, so you can sort of see the edge of the screen that I'm looking at. And, oops, and I'm going to adjust the angle so that the left side of my screen is showing this off right in the center here. So this is the literal blob that I'm looking at. There's this black sort of area and then there's two white dots, right? So you can sort of see, I, sh I sure hope that makes sense. So this, this, uh, this T here, next to this you have two white dots and then this black blob here. And so this is the sort of range that you're looking at is from the left, from the blob touching here, from the white blob touching here to the white blob being off screen. These are the range of values that you're looking at. Unfortunately, depending on your positional setup and everything, it you have to sort of pick a good variance between them. So, for example, when you're doing the clef setup, just, uh, my gosh, when you're doing the the setup where you're looking into the cleft and lining up the left edge of the screen, I usually want it to be a little bit more left like this, so that the first white dot is still all on screen, but the second dot isn't on screen at all. And then I sort of modify from there. Uh, the final step, when you think you have an angle that you want to test throw against the wall, is you want to do, uh, you want to tap forward and then space. So you want to forward space. So I went straight over, which means, uh, which means that I was the angle that I picked was too far to the left, and I needed to pick something that was a little bit more to the right. So we'll try again, and we'll see whether or not our angle changed based on this. Hopefully, it sort of did. Cool. So now we have the looking forward angle, which I get to explain this one as well. So on the side of the screen here, which is a little bit more obvious to tell. There's these two dots and then the smaller dot. You want it so that the two dots on this fence here are on screen, but that one dot is not. And this is a pretty good positional setup. Now, this position is actually different from the one looking into the cleft because you just can't make those sorts of guarantees. So again, I'm gonna show off this again. When looking at the edge of the screen here, yep, you want it to be instead of closer to here which is what you do for the looking into the cleft setup you want it to be more like this you want to be covering up a quarter of the side of the dot and so we'll give this a shot here uh, we'll give we'll give this a shot that was almost good i just needed a little bit more left to make that work uh, so hopefully you can sort of tell that even though I don't really have a full setup, this sort of arrangement that I made where I have a very consistent position and a range of angles that I can do micro variations within sort of gives you most of the way to figuring out what sort of angle. Now, is this a perfect setup? No, I don't think there ever will be. I mean, I sure hope I'm wrong on that case. But... Uh, so yeah, now we're doing this. The angle sometimes changes every other attempt, and I don't know why, but whatever. But basically what it boils down to is this angle is so precise, there's almost no way to, to consistently make it because this cursor is actually so big. This circular cursor is actually so big that, like, let's say, you know, I wanted to pick a point to point at. You know, if I pick the, the top of this, it's actually, like, different 
every time because there's no way you're going to be able to guarantee that the cursor goes somewhere. And because of the variability of this angle, it doesn't actually end up working terribly great, unfortunately. So I will try this. That, that was almost it too. I think I just needed a little bit more of the lab. So based on the sort of reactions that happen, um, based on the reactions, if you get fully blocked off, your angle is too far to the um, right. And that means you need to start shifting a little bit to the left. So like in that example, I was like, okay, so uh, I left a little bit of the dot. Uh, that was too far to the right, so I want to leave less of it. Okay, well, I jumped over it. Uh, hopefully I can get this set up once. If I can get this once, this is fine. I, this is, I've shown off pretty much everything that I know. Okay, so now we've done this positional setup, which means I need to do a different white dot setup. I think that might work. That was actually very, very close. So you can sort of tell when you're starting to crest over the top of whatever the fuck is going on here that you're close or that you you almost had a decent enough setup. And it's just a matter of, of adjusting. Unfortunately, because the angle changes every time, you can't like... That's, that's it. That's There you go. So here's the, the big third final problem with this whole setup is once you start cresting onto this thing here right whatever whatever the hell this collision is up here i don't know you need to figure out what to do next and i haven't figured that out yet because i haven't done this enough times what ends up happening is if you just do an, a running jump forward again you'll actually as you saw you will jump past the collision that extends beyond this ladder here if you do it too far to the right so if you start jumping for over here you won't actually make it and you'll fall down past to the ladder so what you need to approximately aim for in the like 0.3 seconds that you have to figure it out is here or somewhere in between here i don't know i think if you look at my teapots run i just sort of stumble it and i managed to very luckily get it first try but i think what you st what you have to do is try to swing your angle to you know when you're looking at it this way you want to try swinging it a little bit to the left here so that you're pointing this way uh, but yeah hopefully this archaic dumb shit setup gets uh obsoleted by someone else figuring out a better way to do this um i think there's promising other ways to do cleft skip down here but I won't talk about those until I get a solution, so I won't look dumb. But, but yeah, hopefully this is helpful to whatever poor fool tries to also learn uh, more consistent ways to do cleft skip. I, I wish you the best of luck. Feel free to talk to me if you think you found something better. Um, but at the moment, this is what I have, and this is how I managed to get a. I did, yeah. This is the I managed to get a single first try cleft skip in like. 50 attempts so it's it's a success rate that's all that's what i'll go with anyways hope this helps adios oh fucking uru takes away my fucking global keys and it's horseshit because apparently hot